name is Lindsay Moore and I'm going to talk to you today about silk painting. My experience with silk painting is not much. I have only been doing it for about 10 months. I've really enjoyed silk painting, number one because of the bright colors that you can achieve, and number two because of the wide varieties of things you can do with a painted silk. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you one way that I work on silk paintings. Like I said, I'm no expert, but this is how I work and it works for me. To begin, you've got to prep your silk. It's best to wash your silk and remove any oils or residue that are on it so that the silk dyes may adhere best. I like to just run my silks through the washing machine on a quick rinse and take them out when they're done. There's no need to dry the silk, just take it out and when it's mostly dry I like to iron it. At this point your silk should be prepped and ready, ready to go. The first step in the process is to lay out your design. In my tutorial, I'm going to skip this process, but I'll still explain it to you. If you have an intricate design you'd like to place on a silk, it's best to lay that pattern out with pencil. I like to tape my design to the table and tape my silk stretched on top of it. That way there's no shifting and your design will be exactly how you want it. You go ahead and trace your design with pencil on, directly onto the silk. You'll be covering these lines with resist, so there's no need to worry about them showing up in your work. Once you've laid out your entire design with the pencil, it's time to stretch your silk. The stretcher bars are important because they elevate the silk from your working surface and allow the dyes to flow freely. The process of applying resist to the silk is used because silk paints flow freely like watercolor. Using a, a resist or a gutta, as it's sometimes called, you can create fences or block in areas that you'd like to have one color. It's very important during this process to make sure that your resist fully penetrates the silk and reaches the other side. It's also important to make sure that all of your lines match up and there are no gaps where they meet. After you've applied your resist and given it some time to dry, it's time to iron. I like to place a towel on my ironing board so that if any of the resist is not dry, it will not ruin my ironing board. I really enjoy silk dyes because of the bright colors that you can get and also some of the amazing techniques you can use. Like I said, silk dyes flow freely like watercolor, so it's important to not oversaturate your silk as the dye may jump the resist lines and ruin your design. If the dye dries in a certain position, it may leave a mark. So it's important to continue to work on one area until it's completed. While applying your dyes, you can utilize many different techniques that add texture to the silks. Many silk dyes are reactive to salt and or alcohol. Applying the salt or alcohol will create a batik-like look. Once your dye is dry, it is important to steam your silk. Steaming is a very important step in the process of silk painting. Some dyes will set with a chemical fixative, though their colors will not be nearly as vibrant as those that are steamed. You can sometimes steam wrinkles in your silk depending on how you've prepped it for steaming. I prefer to use nice clean newsprint against the surface of the silk while using used on the next layers. It's important to add two to three layers on each side of the silk. I then use a cardboard rod to hold the silk on. This makes sure that the silk is rolled tightly but also leaves an area for steam to enter in the middle. So once your silk has been wrapped and ready to steam, there are many ways you can go about it. I prefer to use the stovepipe method. I built my own stovepipe steamer out of a hot plate, a pot, and a stovepipe. The stovepipe is where I will place my silk to steam. I use old pillowcases to hang my silks in for the steaming process. Most labels state that you should steam the silk for two to three hours, so I prefer anywhere between three and six. Once your silk has finished steaming, it's just about done. The last step is to rinse any extra dye from your piece. It often takes quite a few rinses to get all of the extra dyes out of your silk. Once it's done, I let it air dry and then I iron it. This, with this final ironing, your silk is done. I hope you enjoyed my video about silk painting and maybe picked up some tips. Like I said, I've only been at this for 10 months, so I'm by no means an expert, but I certainly enjoy the process and I hope you do too.